but you know, we just watched the tape upstairs. You don't think there were 10 calls that we thought we got fouled? I mean, this is how it goes. And every coach in the league will tell you the same thing. You watch the tape and you go, man, that's a foul, that's a foul. Um, it's the nature of the game. So I'm disappointed that this has become the whole narrative when it's really, it really should be about two great teams competing against each other. Rockets GM Daryl Morey fired back, tweeting out an article of a 2016 report about Steve Kerr getting fined for complaining about refs missing calls. So, Maddox, will officiating continue to be the headline of this series moving forward? I mean, this is such a 2019 beef, isn't it? You know, you get tweet, uh, tweets and old articles <laughs> and things like that. And meanwhile, these guys will all be sitting next to each other in Summer League laughing about this uh, when it's all said and done. I, I don't know that officiating is going to be the story of this series. There are two things I think need to change, though, about officiating. One is there's got to be clarity on you know, where guys can land and if you can step underneath them. Mm -hmm. That was a rule all season long and players were maddened by how often it was called. And there were three occasions in the first half where Clay Thompson stepped right underneath James Harden for fouls that should have been called. I'm not talking about the final play of the no, game. None of us are. I, I think that was a good non-call. The Draymond play, I don't think was a foul. I, I think everyone at the table said that. But early in the game, it's not just the free throws the Rockets are deprived of. It's that a very thin Warriors team mm -hmm. would have had to have yes. seen Clay Thompson to there the were, I mean, literally three, three plays in a yeah. row where it was pretty obvious that James Harden jumped straight up and Clay jumped underneath him. And all season long, that was mm -hmm. getting called on a consistent basis. It was befuddling that we'd see it not called uh, in, in the way that it wasn't called in this series. The other thing, too, and it's not just specific to this Rockets Warriors series. There are a lot of late whistles in this postseason. Like yes. where referees, well, no, it's not even makeup. It's like referees seem to be waiting for the play to develop and see if the result of the play happens. Yes, yes. That, that shouldn't happen. The ball either it's either a foul or it's not. And, and there are a handful of times. And I got a lot of text about this over the first uh, first round. Either the ball, either it's a foul or it's not. It mm -hmm. shouldn't be predicated on whether or not the shot goes in. What I'm trying to say with the makeup is there have been enough contact where they could have called the foul. But whoever is shooting the basketball, if they're able to finish the shot and or make it, depends on the ref. So yes. then he's acting like he's getting ready to make it up. Then he blows the whistle late. So the inconsistency. It's different in post play. We're used to inconsistent post play, but some of that you can take into your own hands. If they're not calling fouls, you can be more physical. When you are a jump shooter, you can't take it into your own hands. And it's the referee's job as a shooter to protect the shooter. I like the thing that you said. Let's just be clear about this. These games are so important. This could be determined who's going to be world champion. It should be clear in game number two and moving forward what they're going to allow. And it has to be closer to what they did during the regular season than what we saw in game number one. And to Kerr, Kerr said, listen, we watched the tape. We had 10 calls go against us. Well, listen, I, I've seen the full game report. They didn't have 10 calls go against them, they had 11. The problem is the Rockets had 17. So that's plus six for the Warriors on the clear cut misses. On the could have been misses on replay, that number goes to plus 10 Golden State. And the reason this is a story bigger than just the Houston Golden State rivalry is, there was a tweet yesterday and I, was, I, I checked out whether or not the tweet was accurate independently, but somebody compiled all the two minute reports for the Golden State Warriors playoff games dating back the last five years. There have been 31, according to the NBA, missed calls in the games where they've released the two minute reports. 25 have been in the favor of Golden State, six for their opponents. In this game alone, there were three missed calls in the final two minutes. All three were to Golden State's favor. There, for some reason or another, this specific team, which is the team that needs the least help of anybody in the league, seems to get a consistent across years, across opponents, beneficial whistle. And it, I do believe it changed the outcome in game one. I do believe it affected the outcome of the series last year. And that is bothersome. I hope it's not a storyline moving forward, but that's up to the refs more than it's up to the players. But don't you worry about an overcorrection? Because if we're talking about this, the refs are hearing this. I mean, do they get together and they say, oh, well, obviously we, there are all these calls that went the wrong way. I mean, how do they approach this and what do you expect to see? I mean, that's what every team that's on the wrong end of this stuff hopes for. It's why Phil Jackson 
Jackson for years used to yes. write about referees in the hopes that he would get favorable calls mm -hmm. the next time around. I do think there either has been or will be a conversation about that, that landing area rule because it was a point of emphasis for the NBA coming into the season. But I don't want to get too lost in the weeds over the referee's impact in the series. James Harden gets a lot of calls anyway. I mean, James Harden- Because he's the best player in he's, league history look, he's, drawing them. He's excellent at it, no, no question about it. But I, I mean, I don't look at, at I, I think Harden gets a lot of them. The Rockets though, there's a theme emerging with Rockets playing against Golden State. That's that Golden State's defense has been really good against Houston over the last eight games they've played in the postseason. The seven game series last year and game one this year. The Rockets this year, their, their offensive rating was right around 115. Over the last eight games, it was about one 101. Yeah. And James Harden over the last eight games has been a 25% three point shooter against Golden State. Those numbers matter more to me than a few numbers that are skewed on the referee report. And I think because the Rockets don't have a Steph to Harden's KD, that when you build your defense around stopping one guy mm -hmm. and you're as talented as Golden State is, Harden's efficiency is going to drop noticeably. Now, it shouldn't be 25% from three and it shouldn't be 33% from the field like it was in game one, but he is not going to have his regular season level efficiency. That's where he does need, and the Rockets do need, guys. P.J. Tucker hit his open corner threes. Chris, you wanted Chris Paul to be more aggressive in game two than he was in game one. That going to Capella is a point you've been making over the last two days as far as getting him involved in the lob game more often. Those things do have to happen. The point that I'm just harping on is even with them being inefficient, being held down, all those things, if those calls in the first half are made correctly, I believe the Rockets win game one. I don't think it's a stretch to say they win game one. Yeah, they have to be able to make adjustments. And I just believe that James Harden, because we can't think that the regular season is going to be like the playoffs. When you get in the series, these coaches are making adjustments that prevents you from playing like you did during the regular season. So for us to think Milwaukee, that they're gonna be able to play the way they did, no. Golden State even has had to make adjustments in this championship run. When they got pushed in those series, they made adjustments, and I'm expecting Houston, if they got championship affirmation, leave the referees alone and come up with some other shots. PJ has gotta be able to get some shots, and if Chris Paul only takes nine shots as your second best player, they got no chance to be able to get beaten Golden State, even though they are playing against the referees and the Warriors. Goose egg for P.J. Tucker, four points for Clint Capella, four for 13 from three for Eric Gordon, who had a good statistical game yep. scoring-wise. Those numbers to me need to improve more than number of fouls that are called. Chris, thanks for hanging with us today. Got it. Much more Two out of three seconds. Right after this. Right. Keep your hair, man. Hey, You can't get into a I'm hair trying. shading contest unless you got equal can, hair. Can Houston beat Boston?